and welcome to Badminton World. This episode coming to you from the Japanese capital of Tokyo. More specifically, we're in the Shibuya ward of the Asian mega city. This part of Tokyo's metropolitan area always attracting plenty of young people with its status as one of the fashion centers of Japan. But today, all roads led to the Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium. The local crowds making a beeline to witness the start of the 2011 Yonex Japan Super Series. This prestigious tournament celebrating its 30th year of existence. Well, the Japan Open, I, I have to say, the, my first ever major international trip was coming to the Japan Open. I think it was in 1982, which is rather giving away my age, but it's been a tournament I've always loved coming to. The organisation is always fantastic. The stadium always looks beautiful. The presentation, I mean, you only have to look down at the arena there. It's absolutely fantastic. And for me personally, I mean, it, it's been a favourite tournament because I've been fortunate enough to win the Japan Open three times so with three different partners so the Japan Open even before the Super Series came into existence there was a couple of tournaments each year that every single player in World Badminton wanted to do well in one was the All England and one was the Japan Open so it's always held been held by the players in great esteem every player has always wanted to do well here in Japan over the years, the Japan Open has been well known for excellent organisation and infrastructure. The famous Japanese attention to detail, all too evident. We've been trying um, so hard to coordinate everything, like bus schedules, and every day we change the bus time schedule, depending on the traffic conditions and weather or some situations. And also, well, everything. You know, Japanese people work so, so serious and so good. And we would like to make this event, you know, better and better and better every year. So maybe that's why we can continue this event for 30 years. So we are very proud of this event. If foreigners says, you know, this is well organized, we are very happy and honored to hear that. Needless to say, this tournament represents a great chance for Japanese players to showcase their skills in front of their adoring local fans. This year is the 30th anniversary of the tournament, and it's a coincidence that I am also 30 years old. It's an honor for me to play at such a historic tournament. When I was little, I used to watch the tournament on TV and dream of playing here. And now that I am here, I feel very happy. And I'm going to give it my best shot. Japanese badminton is currently in the middle of what seems to be a dramatic transformation. Especially since Korean doubles legend Park Ju Bong has been at the helm as national coach. Under his wing, young talents like Kenichi Tago and Eriko Hirose have found new expression. Hirose performing especially well in recent times, with a final appearance at the 2011 All England Super Series. Our coach was one of the top doubles players in the world in his time. That's more than enough reason to look up to him. There are so many things that we are able to learn by talking to him or just by watching matches with him. I really think he is a top class coach. Park Jubong's standing as one of the greatest doubles players of all time is hugely beneficial to the number of quality doubles pairs in Japan. 2007 World Championship bronze medalist Raiko Shiota bearing witness to the change he's brought about already. Japanese players used to suffer from lack of confidence. We didn't think we were good enough to beat the top players in the world. But ever since Mr. Park has become our coach, he has helped instill confidence in us. He has put us through some tough training and practice, and that has given us some self-belief. We now have a very different attitude towards competing internationally. We are very positive and hungry for success, which wasn't the case earlier. 
Mr. Park has worked on our skills and endurance as well, but mostly he has made us more confident about our game. Yeah, the Japanese uh, badminton players over the years have, have always been very good and especially in the women's game when I was first coming into the sport uh, the first ever world championships which were in Melmo in 1977 Japanese players won medals and certainly at the All England Championships Japanese players were always there or thereabouts and then I think maybe when China and South Korea came into the International Badminton Federation as it was then because there'd been two separate governing bodies. And when the whole of world badminton came together and there was such an impact, I think, from both Chinese and South Korean players that Japan, in the overall standard of things, perhaps took a bit of a slump. But I have to say in recent years, and I think a huge influence of that has been with them employing a, a former world and Olympic champion Park Jubong from Korea as their national coach and Japanese badminton has suddenly shot up again and they are a real force to be reckoned with in, in world terms. Throughout the game's history, Japanese players have been known for their dogged perseverance and defensive capabilities. But these strengths also seem to have made their game a bit one-dimensional, something their opponents have been quick to pick up on. Japanese on the whole, they are known for their consistency and their defense. They're good. They, uh, we cannot take them easy at any point of day because they are very consistent. They play the same kind of game. They make very less mistakes. So Japanese are quite dangerous that way. That's their strong point. And defense. The defense is really good, you know. They can defend for hours together and, you know. Uh, but I think they lack in attacking. Uh, they're not very good at attacking. So uh, I think that's where I think they lack. Uh, they don't have much power. That's what I feel. The women doubles. With Park Jubong in charge, all that's likely to change in the near future, though. 2011 Japan Super Series representing a real chance for players like Eriko Hirose to earn some silverware. But the 26-year-old faced a tough first-round opponent in Sung Ji Hyun. Hirose crashing out at the very first hurdle. A few other results also didn't go Japan's way. The second-seeded women's pair of Miyuki Mayada and Satoko Suatsuna being thrashed by China's Bao Yitzin and Zong Qinzin. Some more bad news for Japan, with their mixed doubles pair of Shintaro Ikeda and Reika Shiota succumbing to the experienced Jawala Guta and Viti Ju, the Indian pair accounting for yet another Japanese casualty. The outcome of the early rounds wasn't all gloom and despair for local fans, with Kenichi Tago and Takuma Ueda both winning their opening round matches. Women's doubles third seeds Mitsuki Fuji and Reika Kekiwa also looking good for a successful campaign. Coming up on Badminton World, we delve into the intricacies of the women's doubles game. That and more action from the Japan Super Series after this short break. In the BWF Men's Singles Super Series, Lee Chong Wei is number one, followed by Lin Dan and Denmark's Peter Gaeda. Chen Long and Chen Jin climb up the ranks, Tafik Hidiat down in sixth. Du Peng Yu seventh, Kenichi Tago eighth. Wang Zengming rises to ninth, Simon Santoso rounding out the top ten. In the BWF Women's Singles Super Series, Wang Shishan stays number one, above Wang Yihan and Wang Jin. Yan Jiao Jiang is in next, followed by Julian Schenk, India's Saina Newal, and Japan's Sayaka Sato. Tina Bounds in at eighth, Cheng Xiao Che ninth, Bei Yun Ju completing the top ten. Welcome back to Badminton World. The crowds flocking to witness the 30th edition of the Japan Open at the Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium. These are the same people who've dealt with a terrible natural disaster just less than a year ago. The 
local badminton establishment conducting a charity auction for earthquake and tsunami victims, with the world's top players lending their support to the cause. The galleries, of course, were full of Japanese fans rooting for their favourite player. Men's single star Kenichi Tago carrying the burden of their expectations. Yes, it's always special to play in Japan compared to any other tournament. There is pressure, but if I can get a good result, that'll be best. The son of two-time All England runner-up Yoshiko Yunakura, Tago is said to have learnt the basics of his game from watching other players at the local club. The 22-year-old has a technique that's entirely his own. One that's put him in very close to the top echelons of world badminton. Tago is just bursting with talent and he never stops working hard. He has great technique and speed. Japan is not known for its men's singles players, but he has changed that by beating some big names. I think he is very close to being recognized as one of the top players in the world. Tago's first shot at badminton stardom was at the 2010 All England Open, where he made the men's singles final against Malaysia's Li Chong Wei. Tago lost that match to the world's top-ranked player and since has struggled to recapture that kind of form, the heightened expectation getting the better of him. Having achieved that status of reaching an All England final, all of a sudden he's having to experience the burden of expectation. Everybody now expects him to be the next great thing of world badminton. And you actually need a little bit of time to consolidate your position in world terms. Men's singles is really tough and uh, you cannot play only good in one tournament. You need to play good in many tournaments and it's a tough, you know, mentally it's really tough, physically it's really tough. And Tago still has to show that he's got the, you know, the guts to keep uh, fighting against the best players in the world uh, every week. Um, I hope he'll do because he's a wonderful player. Tago had the chance to answer his critics at the Japan Open. The youngster looking to bury his demons by getting into the right frame of mind ahead of his quarter-final against his 2010 All England opponent, Lee Chong Wei. Well, in terms of speed and power, there are players from other countries who are better. But what Japanese people have is their spirit of never giving up. So I'd like to keep this in mind when I start my quarter-final match. The first game between the two arch rivals went right down to the wire. Targo poised to go one up with a game point at 22-21. Chong Wei was able to turn the tables with a 21-7 win in the second. The Malaysians simply too good in the third. This time, Lee Chong Wei on his fifth match point opportunity secures the victory. Among the other results from the men's singles quarterfinals, Lin Dan beat compatriot Chen Jin in a three-gamer, Peter Gaeta and Chen Long also booking a spot in the last four. The Japanese crowds have always reserved some special love for the doubles game, and their expectations were sky-high, with pairs like Reika Kakiwa and Mizuki Fuji still in the fray this year. Playing Korea's Ha Jung Yun and Kim Min Jung in the quarters. Fuji and Kakiwa primarily relied on their defensive play to win big points, which is something of a pattern in women's and mixed doubles these days. And that is what a remarkable performance. Women's doubles players in World Badminton now have phenomenal defences. It's, it's absolutely extraordinary. We can see it in the mixed doubles because, of course, if they're defending men who are smashing at nigh on 300 kilometres an hour and the women can defend that in mixed doubles, then obviously you're playing women's doubles and women are not smashing as hard as that. The defensive play, the women find 
quite easy. So in other words, in women's doubles, to win a rally in women's doubles, you have to be even more precise. You're not going to get through with power. India's Joala Gutta is among those who understand these intricacies. The 2011 World Championship bronze medalist insisting that having four players on the court makes doubles twice as interesting. I want uh, everyone to know that doubles is also a very serious event and it is one of the toughest because it's double, doubly fast, it's more thrilling, uh, there's more action, there's more drama in it and people really enjoy seeing doubles, you know. And um, mentally also it's very challenging because you've got to take care of your partner and the two opponents, you know, in front of you. So people really underestimate uh, the doubles. They think that, you know, it's easier to train for doubles, but it's not, you know, it's very fast game. You have to be very quick in your mind. Um, you know, not everybody can play doubles. Mixed doubles, of course, is a completely different ball game, where the women have to deal with the power and reach of their male opponents. This makes it a game of strategy. The tactics involved resembling those used in football or soccer. It's very interesting the comparison with soccer because when, when you watch football games uh, the most interesting thing is how uh, the attacking players actually pull defenders by running off the ball. If you watch tactically what happens in badminton it's exactly the same especially in mixed doubles. The woman goes forward, the movement at the net, her movement on court actually dictates a lot of play. When you watch the top mixed doubles players in the world, somebody like Margin, um, Duala Gutta, it's their movement off the shuttle. So when their partner is playing, they're, they're moving. They're moving slightly back from the net, they're moving to the side, and the sheer threat of them being in the net area makes opponents lift the shuttle, which is exactly what you want as a mixed doubles player, because then your partner, your man, can hit thunder it down from the back of the court. Over to the semi-finals now, where Japan's Fuji and Kakiwa in the far court were giving China's Bao and Zong a hard time. Good defence. And they've done it first time, the last game. But the Chinese fought back to make it a three-gamer. Bao and Zong pulling off an upset win. And they only needed the one. What a match. Denmark's Peter Gader was up against the formidable Li Chong Wei. And it took just 41 minutes for the Malaysian to earn the right to play China's Chen Long in the men's singles final. And that's it. Yay. was Sina Newell versus Julianne Schenk in the women's single semi-finals. The German eighth seed proving too good for the Indian on the day. Only needed the one match point opportunity. Coming up on Badminton World, the day of the finals at the 2011 Japan Super Series. All the action from the last day of the tournament after this short break. Welcome back to Badminton World. The 2011 Japan Super Series attracting huge crowds on the day of the finals. Among the people queuing up outside the Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium are die-hard fans who've come from all parts of the country, some having travelled overnight to catch some top-class badminton. My name is Noriko Sato and I'm from Nagoya and I took a night bus to come here and it took like six hours to get here and um, this is my uh, first time to see your next open and then I'm pretty excited to see uh, today. The local badminton establishment has always gone all out to win over fans each year at the Japan Open. Their players also doing their bit during these well-organized interactions with the public. Sina Newell may have crashed out in the semis, but that didn't stop a few Indian expats from turning up on the final day to support the event. The infrastructure that is provided as compared to the other countries, there is a pretty good infrastructure out here. 
and uh, basically for badminton or any any kind of sports even from the government there is a lot of support out here so if you try to compare it with the other countries actually which are basically on the basically on the developing and the developed countries actually i think there is a lot of difference out there it was soon time for the crowds to settle down with the mixed doubles finals pitting Taiwan's Chen Hung Ling and Cheng Wen Sing against Denmark's Joachim Fischer Nielsen and Christina Pedersen. The match went to a third game, where the Taiwanese fifth seeds ensured that this would be their first ever Super Series win. Ah, this time! Yeah. And the number five seeds Chen Hung Ling and Chen Wen Sing of Chinese Taipei in their fifth final in international competition finally take their first ever title the women's doubles final was an even closer affair the unseeded pair of bao and zong in the near court toiling for an hour and 17 minutes before getting the better of wen sing cheng and yu chin chen The highly decorated pair of Fu Haifeng and Kai Yun were the star attraction in the men's doubles. The four-time world champions beating Mohamed Hassan and Bona Septano in straight games. It's gone wide, it's gone into the net. It is indeed match. Kai Yun and Fu Haifeng have retained the title that they won last year. While the crowds in the stands were enjoying the on-court action, plenty more were experiencing the thrills of the Japan Open Finals via the World Wide Web. The BWF's newly launched live streaming site, badmintonworld.tv, bringing the game to millions of fans across the world. Well, it's a great achievement for us. Well, we're glad that we go up uh, the high technology. Uh, m the modern era now, everybody watch on YouTube. IT. So hopefully we expand more, more events will go to YouTube, so we get a more fan base around the world. That's our goal. Back to the courts now, where the women's singles final had grabbed eyeballs. Germany's Julianne Schenk up against number one seed Wang Yihan, with the first game falling to the tall Chinese player. Oh, no, overdone it, it's gone wide. Yihan kept up the pressure to go up six match points. Schenk staring down the barrel in the second game. One Yihan, the number one seed, the world number one, has taken her third Yonex Japan Open title to the ad to the ones won in 2008 and 2009. The men's singles final featured world number one Li Chong Wei. And against him was Chen Long, who'd just come off a win at the China Super Series. The informed Chinese player made the early running. Chen Long capturing the first game easily at 21-8. The experienced Li Chong Wei struck back with equal vigour. Game two going in his favour with the scoreline reading 21-10. Only needed the one. 21 10 in the second game. Against the run of play, Chen Long was able to take a lead in the third. The 22 year old just one point away from a famous win. winning his second consecutive BWF Super Series title in 2011. 
the Asian Games gold medalist looking better and better with the Olympics coming up in London next year. We leave you now with some standout moments from the 2011 Yonex Japan Super Series. See you next time.